Diapers in Millwood. Samantha pulled up in a moving van to her new house. It was quaint, it was a big change. It hadn't struck her yet how different her life would be now. Today was her first day in Middleton, Maine. A small fishing village on the northernmost east shore with a population of 153. Her family made it 156. Big whoop. It was the beginning of August. Samantha was 17. She wasn't very happy that she had gone to school the same place all her life only to switch schools for her senior year. Plus she would be switching from a school of 3,000 to a school of 200 in the next town over. It was such a big contrast. She had previously lived in San Francisco. Everything was in walking distance. Here in Middleton there was one four-way stop. Three of the four ways went to different towns, the closest was a 20-minute drive. The road heading north went to the harbour and the lighthouse. It was a half-mile walk to the four-way stop, plus all that was there was a gas station with a convenience store deli, a church, a town meeting room, the sheriff's office, and a diner. If you wanted anything else, you had to travel. The reason why she was here was that her grandma had recently passed away leaving her property to Samantha's father. Samantha's dad had saved up a decent amount of money. He couldn't retire in San Francisco, but he had the money to retire here in Middleton where his sister still lived. After all Samantha would be going off to college soon, she was the youngest of three girls, and Samantha's dad liked quiet rural life. He had grown up here, in the house he was inheriting. Samantha brought boxes into the house. They had lived in a small apartment, they didn't have a ton of things. Her new house was huge. It would have cost millions in San Francisco, but this wasn't San Francisco, the people here could afford similar houses on fishing wages. Samantha claimed her room. And put her boxes there. Samantha sat on her bed. She may have dozed off a little she wasn't sure. Samantha, come down here. We're going to dinner with Auntie May's family. Samantha really just wanted to rest. She wasn't hungry. But she did want to see her cousin Caitlin who was the same age she was. They previously only saw each other every few years. Now they would see each other almost daily. Caitlin met Samantha with a hug. They last saw each other when they were 14. Caitlin had grown a ton she had light blonde hair that went all the way down to her butt. She had freckles under her blue eyes. Samantha had grown up too. She was five foot seven, about an inch taller than Caitlin. Samantha's brown hair only went just past her shoulders. Samantha also had freckles. They sat at a different booth than their parents. They started up where they left off. You have a good move. Asked Caitlin. I guess, it's a long drive in the moving van. Samantha didn't want to talk a lot about the move, it was boring. What's there to do around here? Well you can go to the beaches, they're nothing compared to California beaches though. Most are more like cliffs. There's lots of hiking through forests and fishing. None of that interested Samantha. So that is what all the teenagers do for fun. I know, there's not much Caitlin lowered her voice there are a lot of times where a group of us will sneak out and drink in the woods. They're going tonight too. That was more like it. Still it wasn't much. Their food came, the rest of dinner was Samantha telling Caitlin how San Francisco was. Samantha didn't like talking much, but Caitlin really liked hearing about life in a city. Caitlin asked their parents if Samantha could spend the night. Samantha and Caitlin watched movies until Caitlin's parents went to bed. You ready? asked Caitlin. Yeah, I guess. How does this work? It's real easy. Caitlin's parents were asleep upstairs while Samantha and Caitlin were downstairs watching a movie. They'd just left out the front door. Their house had an outside garage. They both got in Caitlin's car. Will they hear the car start? Nah, I've done this a ton of times. They drove for about ten minutes. Caitlin pulled off the road down a dirt path that went into the woods. There were four boys sitting around a fire, 
they were all looked a little older than Samantha. Caitlin parked next to two other cars. Hi guys. Said Caitlin. Hi they all said together. This is my cousin Samantha, she just moved here. They joined the circle. A bottle of whiskey was being passed around. So, Samantha right? I'm James. Now usually we tell jokes or ghost stories here, but we've all heard them all. Have you got any new ones from where you're from? No, we don't usually tell stories. Said Samantha. Well our stories are all pretty stupid, except for a there's one true local one. Ooh, I wanna tell it. A boy said. No, I do said someone else. James smiled I'm gonna tell it, remember what I said, this is a true story. So 50 years ago this town was twice as big. The half that are still here were fishers. The other half worked at Millwood, the insane asylum. Dr. Sherbakov was a well-respected doctor. No one knew what went on inside. Everyone who worked there kept their mouth shut. One day in one of the town meetings a guard at Millwood had a breakdown he said I can't take it anymore. They've all disappeared. The patients are all dead. Dr. Sherbakov calmed him down and he was put into the asylum immediately without a trial or anything, just thrown in a cell. Dr. Sherbakov convinced everyone he was crazy. The sheriff in town didn't suspect anything, but still had to investigate the guard's breakdown. He went over to the asylum. There wasn't anyone to let his car in so he parked outside. There was no receptionist at the front to let him into the prison. Where she was supposed to be he saw Dr. Sherbakov behind the pane of glass. The doctor put his head into a noose and hung himself. The sheriff couldn't stop him. The asylum was locked without a crew and the sheriff couldn't get in. He called the feds. They all went in three days later. Every patient had died because Dr. Sherbakov had been experimenting on them. Most had at least one organ missing. They never found a single member of the staff that worked there. They said that Dr. Sherbakov was paid by Soviets to experiment on people. That was a pretty scary story. Samantha didn't have any questions. The bottle had gone around the circle a few times and Samantha was fairly drunk. They woke up the next morning. Did you have fun last night? asked Caitlin. Yeah I did. I like the woods, they're so different than where I came from. Said Samantha. What do you want to do today? Well I guess you could show me around the area. There's really not much to show said Caitlin. Just show it to me anyway Samantha said tiredly. They got into Caitlin's car. They went to the four-way stop. Not much to see. Caitlin proceeded to drive towards the lighthouse to show Samantha the beach. It was forests on both sides of the road. Every once in a while they drove over a creek. Samantha still couldn't believe how many trees there were here. They passed one clearing which she saw a rather large fenced building about a quarter mile from the road. It was right up next to the hills. There was no road that went there, in between the road and the building was a field of weeds. What's over there? Samantha asked. Oh, that's Millwood, like from the story yesterday. Said Caitlin. I would think that they would demolish it after what happened there. That probably didn't happen, all we know is that it was closed for malpractice. That story is kind of silly. Paid by Russians. Dr. Sherbakov waiting for the sheriff to hang himself. Or the sheriff letting the guard get locked up without a trial? I know the sheriff, he wouldn't do that. So it's not really that scary. Well we don't know, no one has ever been inside. Me and my friends wanted to go explore. We hoped the fence in the back, the door into the courtyard is unlocked, but no one wanted to go in. I wanted to, but not alone. Well that seems like it's something to do. You really want to go in? I heard it's haunted by ghosts of insane people. Insane ghosts are the worst kind too. Caitlin said with a smile. Yeah let's take a look around. 
see if we can find any evidence for the story. Said Samantha. Yeah, doctors always document their work, even the evil ones. You wanna turn around and go right now, asked Caitlin. Nah, where's your sense of adventure? You can only go to haunted places at night. All right, so you're gonna sleep over at my house again? Yeah. Said Samantha. They went to the lighthouse. There wasn't really a beach, it was just a bunch of rocks. Looking at the sea kind of reminded Samantha of San Francisco, but it was facing the wrong way, and there weren't any bridges, or buildings behind her. They turned back around. Samantha thought it was kind of a pointless trip, Caitlin could have just told her there was nothing there. Samantha went to her house after lunch to help her parents unpack the boxes. That was a lot of work that she didn't want to do, she hadn't had much sleep the night before. After an afternoon of unpacking Samantha went back to Caitlin's house to spend the night. Caitlin's parents had gone to sleep. Samantha and Caitlin snuck out again. I put everything we need in the car. Water, snacks, flashlights. That's all I could think of. They drove off. Samantha was used to people on the roads at all times of night. Now they were the only car, she felt kind of alone. They arrived at Millwood. There was a small clearing in the woods before the clearing that they could park Caitlin's car at. It couldn't be seen from the road. They began their hike through the waist-high weeds. Eventually they got to the fence. The front door is locked but the door in the courtyard isn't. The building had a fence with barbed wire around the whole perimeter with one brake to let cars in, only the road was long overgrown. That was where the front door was. The girls walked to the back where there was a break in the barbed wire. The fence wasn't too high. Samantha didn't have a lot of fence jumping experience, but she made it without difficulty. A determined crazy person probably could have escaped, but there wouldn't have been a break in the barbed wire then, and there would have been a guard watching. They were officially in the prison. They walked to the door. Caitlin opened it without any problems. This is as far as we got last time. Caitlin told her. They entered. They shined their flashlights down the hall. There were empty cells on both sides. They walked to the end of the hall. There was a secure door that would have been the entrance and exit. Just to the right of that was a door. They opened it. It was the receptionist area that looked into the waiting room through a pane of glass. This is where he hanged himself. They looked on the ceiling. There was nowhere to put a rope. Not very good for the story. How was he supposed to hang here? Don't know. There's a light switch right there see if you can turn on the lights. Samantha didn't think that was a great idea, it might bring attention to them, but she flipped it. Nothing happened. No power. That's too bad, we could have used the controls here to open that locked door but there's nothing there anyways. They left the room and went upstairs. There was a kitchen and a cafeteria. Those took up the whole second floor. They got back to the first level and went down a different hall that ran parallel to the first. This hall had what looked like hospital rooms on each side. They checked one. Just an operating table a chair and a table. They were all the same. Nothing special. So far they hadn't found anything out of the ordinary or any documents. It looked like someone had taken everything important, and now it was empty and no one had been here in years. At this point they had pretty much walked through the whole building. At the end of the hall there seemed to be a bookshelf out of place. Ooh goody files. Said Caitlin that was all that was on the shelf. Now this is a little creepy said Samantha. There were files on all of the people but on every single piece of paper had be cursed if you go any further handwritten in red ink on every single page of every file. None of these files have dates of death written on them. We aren't going to find anything special on these files, but that writing is pretty disconcerting. Is it on everything? They flipped through different files it seemed to be. There were thousands of pieces of paper here too. How do we go any further? This is a wall. Behind it is outside. We looked through the whole asylum. 
complained Caitlin. Samantha looked at the bookshelf. She pulled it back and it fell. From behind it came a huge gust of wind that smelled like hundred of dead bodies. Samantha stood still something was wrong. She felt an unfamiliar sensation below her waist, she didn't know what it was, she touched her leg. She had peed her pants, and she was still peeing. They both turned and ran. Samantha was confused. She had been plenty scared before and had never peed her pants before. This was extremely scary though. Samantha couldn't remember the last time she peed her pants, she couldn't think about it now though, she was running for her life. They ran out the same way they came in. When they got outside and to the fence they looked behind them. They weren't being followed. They caught their breath before they climbed the fence. Man Caitlin said panting I was so scared I pissed myself. Samantha pointed her flashlight at Caitlin's legs. Wow, me too. That's okay. That was the creepiest moment of my life. I'm done with this place. Caitlin almost sounded mad. Don't tell anyone about this. Never plan to. This happening would be their secret. They got to Caitlin's car. They both took off their wet pants and panties and wrapped them up in a grocery bag in the trunk. They sat half naked for the ride home. It was dead silent in the car. They snuck back into Caitlin's house. Caitlin gave Samantha some panties and PJS to wear. They were both the same size. Samantha's legs would make Caitlin's clothes smell like pee, but both Samantha and Caitlin just put them on. They didn't want to run the shower and wake up Caitlin's parents, they also didn't want to spend a second by themselves. They crawled into their sleeping bags downstairs, but neither could fall asleep no matter how they tried. Samantha thought about what they saw. They hadn't seen anything but the words on the files. They tipped the bookshelf and the foul-smelling wind came. Neither had shown their flashlight behind the shelf, they didn't know what was there. Samantha tried to justify it. Maybe there was a hole in the wall and wind from outside came through. Samantha believed this and thought it was funny now, a little wind made her and her cousin wet their pants. Samantha wasn't ashamed about peeing her pants before, it was genuine fright, but now that she had justified it as some wind she was pretty embarrassed, but anyone there at the time would have peed their pants. The sun was up. Samantha hadn't slept at all. She crawled out of her sleeping bag. Caitlin was awake too. You want any breakfast? asked Caitlin. No, I'm not hungry. Neither am I. Do you have anything you want to do today? Maybe we could check out the school. Said Samantha. Yeah, we could do that. They both showered and Caitlin gave Samantha a pair of jeans to borrow. Caitlin left a note for her parents saying where they were going. They weren't awake yet. It was six in the morning. They got in Caitlin's car and headed for their school. Maine was beautiful in the morning. The sun shone through all the trees. Do you know exactly what happened last night? Asked Caitlin. She had really wanted to talk about it, she just wanted to make sure they were completely alone. I really don't know. I was thinking maybe there wasn't a wall behind the bookshelf and some wind came in from outside. Maybe, but the smell. It was strong. Too strong to be a dead animal outside. So you have any other ideas? No, I don't. I don't know. I can't explain it, but I also don't believe in anything supernatural. Said Caitlin. Neither did Samantha, she just didn't know what happened. We were sneaking into an insane asylum from a ghost story. We were nervous, we probably just thought something happened when it didn't. That was probably true. Yeah, I still don't want to go back there though. It's scary. You don't want to know what was behind the bookshelf? Asked Caitlin. I kind of do. I don't know. Give it a few days I might change my mind. Caitlin didn't say anything to that. A few minutes later she said. Man, I've got to pee really bad. She was touching herself with one hand driving with the other. 
If you have to go that bad why didn't you go before we left? That was like five minutes ago. I didn't need to go then. You don't even know how bad I have to pee. Said Caitlin. There weren't any cars in sight. Caitlin pulled over to the side of the road and got out of the car. She walked over to the other side of the car, pulled down her pants and started peeing on the ground. Samantha was confused. You couldn't wait. It was an emergency, said Caitlin while she was squatting down peeing. Caitlin finished up and got back into the car. They didn't talk for the rest of the drive. Well here is the school, said Caitlin. It was a two-story building with a football field next to it. The field had a track around it. It was in a slightly larger town. Samantha could see a gas station, a bank, and a few restaurants down the road. Other than those all she could see were trees. They were about two-thirds home when Samantha suddenly had to pee really bad. Now I know what you meant when you said you had to pee bad. Samantha didn't want to, but she held her crotch. She couldn't remember a time when she needed to go this bad. It just snuck up on her too. I'm gonna need to find a bathroom quick. We'll be home in just a few minutes. The pain was immense. She didn't know how long she could hold it. A jet of pee slipped out of Samantha. She felt it spread through her panties, it felt gross. I can't wait that long. What do you want me to do? Samantha was holding her crotch leaning forward. Pull off the road like you did when you had to go. Samantha said irritably. Caitlin pulled over, but it was too late. Samantha felt all of her pee rushing out of her into the pants Caitlin had loaned her. A puddle grew beneath Samantha as she emptied her bladder. Um, wow was all Caitlin could say. She was kind of grossed out by Samantha's accident, but also felt pity on her. Caitlin would have freaked out if she hadn't also experienced a sudden need to pee. Samantha felt humiliated, and also disgusted. She was sitting in pee, she also felt bad that it was in Caitlin's car. They went to Caitlin's house first. Caitlin went in and got another pair of pants and panties for Samantha to wear. Samantha changed into them in the garage. Caitlin hadn't taken their peeding clothes out of the trunk yet so she added the ones Samantha was wearing to those. I'll clean the car, maybe it's better if we both went home for the rest of the day. Said Caitlin. Yeah, you're probably right. Samantha sat in the back seat and Caitlin dropped her off at her house. It was only 7am. Samantha was tired, her parents weren't awake yet. Now that they had decided nothing happened Samantha thought she could fall asleep. She laid down and fell asleep almost instantly. Samantha's mom woke her up. Are you okay honey? Something was wrong. Samantha moved a little bit and everything felt damp from her waist down. Samantha horrified threw the sheets off. She had wet the bed. It's all right honey. I read that this isn't uncommon during stressful times such as moving. Samantha had read that too and it was talking about five-year-olds. It's all right, I'll clean this, you just go shower. Samantha went into the shower. She came out and put the wet cloths in the washing machine, she realized that she had again peed in Caitlin's clothes. It was about two in the afternoon. Samantha didn't want to go out the rest of the day. Whenever she had to use the bathroom it was extremely urgent. Samantha didn't know what to make of it. Her best guess was that it was some post-trauma type thing from last night that was somehow affecting her bladder. Samantha went to sleep again. She had a nightmare. She was back at the asylum, alone. Behind the bookshelf was a staircase to a lower level. She walked down the stairs she found a door. She opened it. Dr. Sherbakov was hanging from his neck in the middle of the room. He smiled at her. The slammed behind her. Samantha didn't feel anything, but she looked down. She had wet her pants. Samantha's mom woke her up again. It was about noon and her parents didn't like her sleeping in past ten. She just looked at Samantha. Samantha touched her crotch. She had wet her bed again. 
Samantha started crying. It's all right honey. Her mom sat down on the bed. You know I can't get mad at you for something you can't help. Samantha was genuinely glad to hear that. Look, it'll pass. I'm gonna put the plastic sheet on for now. Don't be embarrassed, at some point this happens to everyone. Go take a shower. Samantha got into the shower. Her mom was right, it would pass, but when she said at some point this happens to everyone that some point was about five or six. She had heard about people wetting the bed after being in near-death situations. She wasn't too keen on sleeping on a plastic sheet. Samantha had never had bedwetting problems. Her oldest sister did when she was a kid which is why they had the plastic sheet. Samantha was lying on the couch watching TV. She was feeling bad about herself. Samantha got up to walk to the kitchen for a snack. Three steps in she felt her panties get tighter. The back was stretching. She sprinted to the bathroom. But what could she do? Her panties were completely full. Now she was truly disgusted. She had completely messed her pants. She could feel it in between her cheeks. She didn't have any warning. Samantha cleaned her butt. She kneeled down and cleaned her dirty panties in the toilet. She remembered this is what she had to do when she was in potty training if she pooped her pants. Something was definitely wrong now. She couldn't convince herself that there was such a thing as post-traumatic pants pooping. Samantha got out of the bathroom. She didn't know what the cause of her problems was, but she now suspected it wasn't trauma. The next option was that she and Caitlin had been cursed like the file said. They had kind of gone further. Samantha didn't believe in any supernatural stuff. If she was cursed, then Caitlin would also have been cursed. It wasn't a coincidence that when they tipped over the bookshelf that they had both peed their pants. Also on the trip to their school yesterday. If they were cursed then Caitlin would have wet her bed and messed her pants also. Samantha called Caitlin. She didn't exactly know what to say. Caitlin picked up. Hello? We need to talk. Said Samantha. You're right. I'll be right over to pick you up. Caitlin hung up. Caitlin pulled up a few minutes later. She handed Samantha her now clean pants and panties from the asylum. They walked a little bit into the woods near Samantha's house to be sure that her parents couldn't hear them. So this might be a really embarrassing question started Samantha but have you been having accidents? That was a kind of indirect question, but Caitlin knew what she meant. Yeah I wet the bed last night. Yeah, I did too. Did you um, mess your pants? No Caitlin said quietly. Her face turned serious and sad. She wasn't because she knew it happened to her cousin, it was because she figured it would happen to her. I know you don't believe in the supernatural, but I think we might have been cursed. Samantha expected her to deny it, but she simply said. You might be right. So now what? We can do our research about the place. We'll probably have to go back too. Why are you right? Let's do the research first, said Samantha. There's a library in Alexville. About half an hour from here. Half hour, said Samantha. She was nervous about the drive. Caitlin knew what she was feeling. We'll be fine as long as we pee before we go. Plus when we get there we can get a little help. We can get help holding our pee. Yes said Caitlin. They made the trip fine. They went in the drugstore in Alexville. What Caitlin had meant was adult diapers. They bought a box of Depends. Samantha was going to protest wearing diapers but she realized they needed them. Samantha had already wet her pants, twice if you count the asylum, she had wet the bed twice, and she had messed her pants while she was right next to the bathroom. They had each brought a diaper into a stall in the drugstore. Samantha didn't know how exactly to put it on. It was pretty straightforward. She waddled out of the stall. It was definitely different. Caitlin came out. Let's do some research. In the library, they first went to a computer and typed in Millwood Asylum Middleton, Maine. 
The search came up with a few suggestions. Caitlin went to the local section of the library to look at the books. Samantha stayed on the computer to look it up online. She found a page titled The History of Millwood Asylum. She flipped through it. Founded in 1942, housed the criminally insane, led by Dr. Vladimir Sherbakov, closed for malpractice 1968. Samantha looked at the next website. Same thing. She couldn't find any information about dead patients, suicidal doctors, or huge FBI investigations. She looked up Millwood malpractice case. The same pages popped up. Realizing she wouldn't get anywhere Samantha went to go join Caitlin. It occurred to her that the people here would have written it down on paper. This area was so rural that the people here hadn't put everything on the internet. Caitlin was sitting on the floor next to a stack of books. Have you found anything? asked Samantha. Not yet, but I'm still looking at my first book. It was a book of local history. Did you find anything? No, this might be the first time the internet didn't have what I was looking for. Samantha picked up the next book in the stack and started going through it. They looked for a while. All that they could find was that the asylum was closed for malpractice, but no details. Samantha was starting to get hungry. It was around lunchtime. Samantha felt the sudden urge to pee. She put her book down. Ime used the bathroom, be right back. Samantha was in the far corner of the library. She walked to the middle. She already had to pee really bad. She was trying not to touch herself. Samantha then realized she was in an unfamiliar place and had no idea where the bathroom was. She looked around, she couldn't see any signs. She walked towards the entrance. There were no bathrooms there, but there was a librarian. Excuse me, do you know where the bathroom is? said Samantha not trying to sound too desperate. Down there. She pointed down the wing opposite of where Caitlin was. Samantha was desperate, but she couldn't run or hold her crotch in public. She felt herself start to pee. Samantha tried to control it but couldn't. Her bladder released itself. She was standing completely out in the open wetting herself. Samantha was feeling really self-conscious even though nobody could tell what was happening. She stepped off to the side in between some bookshelves. It offered her a little privacy while she did her business. She continued to pee into her diaper. It felt weird. It only felt wet while she was peeing. A few seconds after it felt completely dry. Her diaper hadn't leaked. Samantha was glad. She really did need them. Samantha walked back to Caitlin. It felt like she had a weight hanging from her crotch. Did you find anything yet? asked Samantha. I didn't find anything. But I have an idea. Okay, what is it? You know how in the story the FBI came to investigate, said Caitlin. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that didn't happen. That would have been big news in these parts and someone would have written it down. I think that the sheriff of Middleton investigated it, which means that it would be back at his office. So how do we see it? asked Samantha. We'll just ask. You know him. There's 150 people in the town, everyone knows him. So we're heading back. Yeah let's go said Caitlin. Hold on, I need my diaper changed first. Caitlin giggled did someone have an oopsies? They walked into the sheriff's office. He looked like a happy old man, he did look a little old to be handling police work though. Hi Caitlin he said cheerfully and who is this? I'm Samantha she shook his hand I'm Caitlin's cousin. Oh, you guys just moved here huh? I was meaning to come and welcome you guys. My condolences for your grandmother, both of you, she meant a lot to this town. Well anyways what can I do for you girls? May we look at one of the old case files, asked Caitlin. Now I'm not supposed to just hand those to anybody. He looked at the two girls but I'm sure there's no harm in letting you guys see them. Which did you want to look at? The malpractice case at Millwood. Said Caitlin. His expression became serious. 
You can't look at that one. He paused I burned it years ago. In my 55 years of being sheriff here that was the only case that I couldn't figure out, not much serious has happened in this town. I've never told anyone about what happened, but I'm too old to keep secrets now. I'll tell you girls if you promise me not to tell anyone anything until I retire. We promise. So a guard had a nervous breakdown at a town meeting. He was screaming a bunch of crazy stuff about the asylum. I escorted out of the meeting and put him in the holding cell until he calmed down. Now I didn't believe anything he said, but he calmed down and was as far as I could tell fine. But he kept saying the same crazy things. Like what? That old dr. Sherbakov was sacrificing patients to the devil. That sounded crazy, but I went over there to tell the doctor what this guard was saying and I found him hanging in his office. I went into the asylum and found the whole place empty. No evidence of any devil sacrifices, but there was nothing there, no guards, nurses, patients, or even files on patients. I didn't know what happened. I searched the surrounding forests and such, no one. I couldn't tell everyone that there were a bunch of insane criminals on the loose. I wrote that the asylum was closed and that the patients had been transported to different asylums and that everyone who worked there had moved away. I'm surprised people believed that. Half the town was missing. I thought I would lose my job. I was fully expecting escaped patients to turn up and commit crimes, but two months passed and nothing happened. I was still afraid that one day they would turn up. They were insane running loose they eventually had to bring attention to themselves, but they never did. I never found out where the patients or the staff went. I also never told anyone this until now. When you searched the asylum, did you look behind any bookshelves? asked Caitlin. That question took him a little off guard. It was oddly specific no I never looked behind any bookshelves. Alright thank you. You're welcome. And remember you guys promised. He said. Your secret is safe with us. Said Caitlin. He seemed to know they were onto something. Before you guys leave, if you figure anything out, could you tell me? I won't get you guys in trouble, I really just want to know. This has puzzled me for years. Will do. They left and got into Caitlin's car. Caitlin was touching her crotch. You need to use the bathroom. There is no bathroom. Caitlin leaned back in her seat and closed her eyes for about a minute. This same thing had happened to Samantha recently, but she couldn't help feeling grossed out about what her cousin just did. Now where? asked Samantha. Let's just think right now. So only the sheriff investigated it and he told us he didn't look behind the bookshelf. We have to go back and see what's there. Samantha really didn't want to go back but she knew they had to. Let's go tomorrow, in the daytime. Caitlin dropped Samantha off at her house. They split the remaining diapers. Caitlin drove off. Samantha sat down to watch TV. What had she gotten herself into? She now had to go back to the asylum and figure out how to lift a curse. Also she had to hide diapers from her parents. They were out right now, Samantha didn't know where. Samantha realized that she didn't need diapers around the house. She went and changed into her panties. Samantha and her family were sitting down for dinner. So Samantha, you enjoying it here? asked her mom. Yes she lied. Why we haven't seen you much, are you and Caitlin having fun? asked Samantha's dad. Why eh, she was just showing me around the area. We're off exploring and such. Sounds like fun. I used to hike through the woods around here a lot. Said her dad. Samantha took a bite. She suddenly felt warmth running through her lap. There was nothing she could do, she hadn't even felt it. Samantha was peeing in her pants. She was horrified. Her dad heard the droplets pattering onto the floor on. He looked up from his food. Did you spill something? but her saw her drink was full. Samantha just stood up and ran straight to the bathroom. Her parents saw her run away in her soaked pants. Samantha cried in the bathroom. 
She really didn't feel all that bad about it, she really had bigger problems to deal with. But she cried because that is what she thought that her parents would think she would do if she peed her pants out of the blue. Are you all right? asked her mom through the door. I'm fine said Samantha crying. Is something wrong? No, I'm fine said Samantha. Can you tell me what happened? asked her mom. I was holding my pee in, I was trying to finish dinner, but then I guess I held it too long and it just came out. Samantha tried to think if that would sound plausible. Well, all right, feel better. I left a change of clothes by the door. Her mom left. Samantha knew her mom was confused and probably worried. Samantha couldn't explain it to her, but she was taking it well. Samantha lay down on her bed. She heard the crinkle of both her diaper and her plastic sheet. She went to sleep dreading going back to the asylum tomorrow. Samantha wore a diaper under her Sunday dress. She had a week before she started school. If there was a way, she wanted the whole thing to be resolved by then. The whole town was in church. After the service Samantha went to talk with Caitlin. You ready? Caitlin asked grimly. Yeah are we going to meet after lunch? I'm not hungry replied Caitlin. Me either. Caitlin grabbed a Bible from the pew and put it in her bag. Well let's get going then. Caitlin and Samantha both told their parents they were going off together and then they left. They arrived at the woods near the asylum. Are we ready to go in? Samantha was terrified, but was trying not to show it. Let me change my diaper first, said Caitlin do you need one too? Samantha didn't think she did, but she checked hers, it was wet. It wasn't warm either, she didn't know how long ago it had happened. This disturbed her a bit um, why eh? They both got clean diapers on and got ready to go in. Caitlin wrote a note saying that if they didn't come back don't look for them and destroy the asylum. She left it on the driver's seat of her car. Samantha thought that the note was a little ominous. Here hold this. Caitlin pulled a deer rifle out of the trunk and handed it to Samantha. Do you even know how to use this? I've been hunting with my dad before. Replied Caitlin. Samantha thought it was unnecessary, what use would a gun be against evil spirits? It did make her feel protected though. Let's go. Caitlin was holding a video camera and a Bible. She had a flashlight in her pocket just in case. Samantha climbed the fence first. It was considerably harder in a diaper. Caitlin handed Samantha everything one at a time over the fence, then she hopped over. They walked into the asylum. Samantha had the camera and the Bible, she was afraid to handle the gun. She started filming. She really hoped no one would see this video, they were walking around somewhere they weren't supposed to be with a gun. Not to mention they were both wearing diapers. It was so quiet all they could hear were their footsteps and the crinkling of their diapers as they walked. They were at the hall where the bookshelf was. They could tell there was an obvious opening behind it. Samantha was nervous. She was wetting herself, she couldn't feel herself peeing, but she could feel her diaper expanding. I just wet myself Samantha said aloud forgetting that she was filming. That's nothing, I messed my diaper. Samantha could only imagine what it felt like to walk around in poopy diapers. They approached the tipped over shelf. Files were spread all around the floor, some of them stained with pee. The strong smell of decay filled the hallway. There was an obvious opening behind the shelf. Caitlin handed Samantha the flashlight. It was dark in there. Samantha turned the flashlight on. There was a spiral staircase leading downward behind the shelf. Caitlin went in first holding up the gun. Samantha followed her with the light. The smell got worse as they went in deeper. They had gone down at least one story when the stairs ended. It opened up into a larger rectangular room. Piles of bones lined the walls. They had found the staff and the inmates. They wanted out of there, but nothing was there to immediately harm them. Everything there was dead except them. There were faded red markings etched into every inch of the walls. 
It looked like a language that neither of them had seen before. Samantha scanned all the walls and ceiling with the light and the video camera making sure to get everything on video. They didn't want to go in. They checked to make sure they weren't missing anything obvious. Then they left. The girls sat in their new clean diapers in Caitlin's room. They plugged the camcorder into her computer. So we're going to show this to the sheriff, asked Samantha. We'll cut out the beginning part and the parts where we mention our diapers. Won't we get in trouble for being there? And you can't cut out the parts where you have the gun. That's like all the important ones. He said we wouldn't get in trouble. I just don't want him to know about our diapers. Said Caitlin. They played the video. They paid extra close attention to when they got to the basement. They both noticed something instantly. The markings on the walls were all gone. What the hell? That's a little bit different. Said Samantha. We can still show him, I'm sure he would like to know about the skeletons. I just wish we had pictures so we could try to find what the markings were. I remember what they look like. Samantha thought back. She had an extremely vivid image in her mind of what the markings looked like. She grabbed some paper from the printer and started writing what she saw. She filled a page full of markings, the pattern repeated on each of the walls so there was no need to write more. Well, we need to do some more research on what those might mean. Said Caitlin. They looked online. Dr. Sherbakov was Russian, try that. Said Samantha. Doesn't look anything like that. Said Caitlin. Someone said something about sacrifices to the devil, we could try Hebrew. Caitlin searched it up. Nothing like Hebrew either. Latin. Nope. Aramaic. Nope. Said Caitlin I don't think we're gonna find it, I've never seen anything like it. Alright, we're reaching now, but is there any demonic, or satanic language, said Samantha. Caitlin looked around on the computer a bit. I found a site that says there is a such thing, but there aren't any pictures or examples. Samantha looked at the website. It was titled Madam Venus's Portal into Hell. Samantha read through, this lady claimed she knew how to speak to demons and the devil himself. Think she can help us, asked Samantha. We can at least ask, she has an email at the bottom. They took a picture of what Samantha had seen in the basement of the asylum. They attached it to an email asking if she could identify the writing. Well, all we can do now is wait for her reply. Said Caitlin. Samantha got up from behind the computer. I think I'll head home then. Samantha hadn't spent a lot of time at her house for the past few days. Want a ride? Offered Caitlin. No, I think I'll walk. Said Samantha. Hey, when do you want to show Sheriff the video? Um, let's put that off a bit. Definitely before school starts though. Said Caitlin. Samantha's walk home was a rare time. She was by herself and could think. After going to church her whole life Samantha wasn't comfortable talking with this Madame Venus. After walking a while Samantha's diaper felt different. She checked it assuming that she had peed herself. It was damp, but it wasn't as wet as it should be if her bladder filled up and released. Her diaper being only a little wet kind of worried her. Has she just been letting out her pee as soon as it got into her bladder? Samantha had to know. She tried to pee, nothing came out. She hadn't peed since she before she changed her diaper at Caitlin's house, about an hour ago, surely she should have had something in her bladder. It was getting worse, first it made them need to pee urgently, then their bladders would fill and release without warning them, but now their bladder wasn't holding anything, they were just constantly leaking. The next day Caitlin called Samantha. She replied. Does she know what it is? Samantha asked excitedly. Yes, but she wants to meet, you have to come read this, I'll be over to pick you up soon. Said Caitlin. They went upstairs to Caitlin's computer. Samantha read the message. Yes, I know what the writing means. We need to meet now. 
You two are in serious danger if you've seen this, please contact me as soon as you can. Hum, she sounds pretty serious. Said Samantha. She might be dramatizing it, she has to make money somehow. We're a little short on money, and we don't know where she is, and we sure can't travel far. Said Samantha. Well we can tell her that, said Caitlin. She opened a new email and started typing we have no money and can't travel. Now she'll probably say oh, that's too bad, you're in danger so come to me when you get cash. Said Caitlin. Madam Venus's reply came in minutes. You are genuinely cursed. I need no money. I am the only one who can help you, where do you live? Caitlin replied with Middleton, Maine. She doesn't want any money, asked Samantha. Seems too good to be true. If she's not asking for anything we can give her a chance. Said Caitlin. All right, Samantha said reluctantly. She still wasn't comfortable talking to anyone who claims to communicate with the devil. Madam Venus replied again I live near Boston and am willing to make the drive up, can we meet sometime tomorrow? Do we really want to meet her? asked Samantha. Do we really want this curse lifted? asked Caitlin this is progress, besides we aren't doing anything else tomorrow. Okay, fine. Let's just make sure she really wants to come said Samantha. Caitlin began typing are you sure you want to come up, it's a long drive and I can't pay you anything. A few minutes passed and they read her reply yes I'm sure, I'll be there tomorrow. May I have a phone number to tell you when I get there and to pick a meeting place. Caitlin typed in her number and sent it. Well I guess we'll see her tomorrow. Around noon the next day Caitlin's phone rang. Hello? Caitlin answered. Hello said a women's raspy voice. I'm here at your town, parked at the gas station, where do you want to meet? Um, they knew everyone in the town and didn't want to meet in private. I'll drive up next to you, and then we could do talk in the woods. It'll be more private. I'm in a white 96 Mazda sedan. Ah, I'm in the big red Toyota at the gas station, I'll see you soon. Caitlin first picked up Samantha, then drove to the gas station. The saw Madam Venus's car and pulled up next to it. Caitlin waved, Madam Venus waved back. Caitlin drove off while Madam Venus followed. Caitlin pulled into the woods, to the same spot they had snuck out to the first night. Madam Venus stepped out of her car. She was a short woman of about fifty. She had long, thinned out, obviously dyed brown hair. Samantha and Caitlin came out. Hello, so which one of you is afflicted? Venus said slowly. Both of us madam said Caitlin. Well what you have is very serious. I had to come out here. Many people claim to be afflicted and are not, but when I saw your writing I knew this was the real thing. I am compelled to help you. We greatly appreciate it. Said Caitlin do you know what the writing is? Yes, and I can translate some of it. I'm paraphrasing, it's difficult to translate completely, but what it said was this is the realm of Vanskixa. No one leaves unharmed without payment. There is some more, but I don't understand it. You two obviously didn't pay and because of that were cursed, could you please tell me the nature of your problems? We, um, lost control of our bladders and bowels. Said Caitlin shyly. Hum, I have not talked to Van Skixer directly, but I can tell that he is very powerful, and also a trickster. Madam Venus said in her slow gravely tone. So this is a joke he's playing on us, asked Caitlin. A humorous punishment for ignoring him, he will probably heal you once you pay him, said Venus. Well what does he want, asked Caitlin. I can try to ask Venus sat down on a log with her eyes shut. She shuddered and quaked. After a few moments her eyes opened wide and her mouth was aghast. Bad news. What? asked Caitlin. He wants a human life, and it seems by speaking to him that I provoked him. The curse will start spreading soon, unless he gets what he wants. Does he want each of us to take a life, or one life to heal both of us? asked Caitlin. One life to heal both of you. 
Samantha and Caitlin thought about it a second. I can't help you anymore, I've been shut out. I don't know how you two deal with this, it cannot concern me anymore. Madam Venus got in her car and drove off. Caitlin and Samantha found her leaving O suddenly rude. They started the drive back to town, Samantha seriously needed a diaper change. I'm gonna do it. Said Caitlin. What? To who? Said Samantha. Myself, Emma go down to Millwood tonight with the deer rifle. Said Caitlin. No. You're not doing that, we can ask Pastor for an exorcism or something. That'd make this a big deal, and he probably doesn't know how. This is my mess and I'll clean it up quietly. I wanted to go into the asylum, I tipped over the bookcase. Said Samantha I can't let you. Give it some time, think about it. Let's let Sheriff know before you do anything. I'll think about it, let's tell Sheriff right now. Said Caitlin. They went to Caitlin's house, changed their diapers, grabbed the video of the asylum, and then went to the sheriff's office. The sheriff was laughing and talking on the phone, but his expression when they walked in became dead serious. I'm gonna have to call you back. He put down the phone. What can I do for you ladies? We know what happened at the asylum. Said Caitlin. Please show me. He said. They played the video for him. I'll have to go down there and look at the skeletons. He said. You can't said Caitlin. And why not? He asked. Well, that's the home of a demon and you'll contract a curse. He took a second to think about that did that happen to you guys? Yes yeah, said Caitlin. What kind of curse? He asked. We'd rather not say. That's fine, I don't need to know. How do you guys know all this? We asked a medium. What did she tell you? He asked. This'll sound crazy, you sure you want to hear? Yes, very much so. We were pretty much we got cursed for trespassing and that the only way to lift it is to sacrifice someone. Said Caitlin. Damn, he paused to think if it's anyone, might as well be me. What? Said Samantha. You can't believe her. Said Caitlin. Look, I've gone to church every Sunday for more than seventy years. I know that those fortune tellers can be right, because the devil lets them. I now know what happened at Millwood now after all these years. I assume that's why old Sherbakov did what he did, tried to appease the demon in his basement. I've got some closure now. You've done nothing wrong, you can't let us kill you. Said Caitlin. I can and I will. Look, I don't know how I can explain this. I've never been married, never had kids, my only responsibility is to this job that I'm too old for. I don't fear death anymore, I used to, but as I grow older, I don't care. I'm almost waiting for it. If for some reason the Lord wanted to take me away I always dreamt it would be in some heroic sacrifice, I thought I'd never get the chance, go out with a whimper, but it seems that this is my last calling. All right Samantha said acceptingly. We're going to the asylum correct, he said. Well if it happens in his realm, then anyone who goes down there to find you will be cursed. Said Caitlin. Well, let's go to the asylum anyways, I'd like to see it, it don't have to happen in the basement. I'm leaving a note so that my body gets found. One last request though, would one of you like to take my place? Someone needs to do it, and you know everyone. We'd be honoured. They both said. I'm putting that on the note. I think the new requirement is that you need two years of college, but this is such a small town I think that can be overlooked, you two will both be sheriffs upon completion of high school. He turned grim let's get this over with. Caitlin and Samantha followed sheriff's police car to Millwood. Park by the road, he shouted to them we can't have two sets of tire tracks. They did as he asked. When they got to the back of the asylum sheriff was cutting through the chain link fence with bolt cutters. He was almost done when they got there. Too old to be climbing fences. The girls just smiled back at him. They made their way wordlessly down to the basement. He handed them gloves. 
Can't let anyone find out you were here. They walked down the stairs lower into the earth. So this room was what all the fuss was about, he asked. Yeah, said Caitlin. Do you see the writing on the walls, asked Samantha it didn't show up on video. Peculiar. He said well, I've seen it. They walked back up the stairs and replaced the bookshelf as best they could. Later, I want you girls to make sure no one ever wanders down there again. He said. They walked into one of the hospital rooms and he sat down. After a momentary pause he said well, I guess this is it. I've thought about it now, I've had a good life. No regrets anymore, always had everything I needed. Protected this town fifty five years. I'm ready. He pulled out his revolver and pointed it at his head. I'll hold the gun here, but one of you have to pull the trigger. Caitlin stepped forward. She put her finger on the trigger. Everyone was frozen for a couple seconds. He chuckled come on miss, the anticipation will kill me before you do. I can't Caitlin started to cry. Samantha walked next to Caitlin, she put her finger over Caitlin's and pushed down. The gun went off and Sheriff fell dead onto the floor. We both did it said Samantha. They left the scene trying not to look at Sheriff's body. They were both crying as they drove back to town. There was a solemn silence. The pity of it all, Sheriff was a great man, the rest of the town knew it, but they would think that in the end, he was a 77-year-old who committed suicide for no reason. No one would know the heroism of his death. It hadn't struck them yet that they had killed a man. They were both feeling so down about this whole situation. That was momentarily interrupted when Samantha felt an old familiar sensation. She screamed it out with joy I have to pee. They both had huge smiles with tears still on their faces. Samantha walked into her perfectly tidy sheriff's office and sat down. She and Caitlin were the only people who could truly honour his memory. The only people who knew his sacrifice for them, and also the whole town. They honoured his memory by being the best sheriffs they could, their whole lives focused around their jobs. Also, they couldn't explain why, it just felt right. It reminded them of when he helped them, but every once in a while they would wear diapers.